Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music. I'm going to talk about how you could play a song called I Feel Good by James Brown. And it starts out with this really, really cool bass lick that you could kind of follow where you could go 5th fret on the A string, 7th fret on the G string, 5th fret on the G, 7 on the G, 5th fret on the G, 7 on the D, or G, and then back to 5th, or back to the A string 5th, and then back to 7 on the G, and then 5 on the G, and then 7 on the D. So we're going five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven. And if you're kind of digging on that leg. And lick, we end up doing that lick twice. And then we go to a G lick. But it's very similar where you could go third fret on the low E. And kind of work it to fifth fret on the D string. To third on the D. And then back to third on the low E. And then fifth on the D. And then third on the D. And then fifth on the A. And then we go back to that D lick again. And then we could go low E on the fifth, and then third fret on the low E. And then there's this cool little lick where you could play fifth on the A, fourth on the D, seven on the D, fifth on the G, and then fifth on the B. So that last part you want five, four, seven, five, five. Now the chords that would kind of back up that lick though would start on a D major chord. When we play D major. First finger goes to the G string on the 2nd fret, 2nd finger on the high E 2nd fret, and 3rd finger on the B string on the 3rd fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, that sounds a D major chord and it sounds really, really happy. Now you may also want to think about using a D7 for this. And so you play D7 with 1st finger on the B string 1st fret, 2nd finger on the G string 2nd fret, and 3rd finger on the high E 2nd fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, that sounds a D7 chord and it sounds really nasty. Or you might want to kind of consider playing something called a D9. And then we play D9, first finger goes to the D on the 4th fret, 2nd finger on the A string 5th fret, and 3rd finger over the G, B, and E on the 5th fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, that sounds a D9 chord, so you want to think about that for your Ds too. And then from the D we go to a G major chord. G major. First finger goes to the A string on the 2nd fret, 2nd finger on the low E string 3rd fret, and 3rd finger on the high E on the 3rd fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord and it sounds really, really happy. Now you may also want to think about using a G7 chord through the song. And the way you play G7, first finger goes to the high E on the 1st fret, 2nd finger on the A string 2nd fret, and 3rd finger on the low E string on the 3rd fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G7 chord and it sounds really, really nasty. Now you can also do this as a bar chord if you, if you dig on bars. You can do it on, on the 3rd fret for your bar, 2nd finger on the G string on the 4th fret, 3rd finger on the A string on the 5th fret, and the pinky on the D string on the 5th fret, kind of for your G major. Or you could lift off the pinky and make that a G7 chord. Or another voicing that would be really cool is something called G13, where you do 1st finger on the low E 3rd, 2nd finger on the D string on the 3rd, 3rd finger on the G string, 4th fret, and the pinky over the E and the B on the 5th fret. And that might be kind of a cool way to kind of work it as a G13 chord. And then from the G we go back to our D major, and then we do another D. But then we go to an A major hit, and we play A major. 1st finger goes to the D on the 2nd fret, 2nd finger on the G string, 2nd fret, and 3rd finger on the B string on the 2nd fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an A major chord, and it sounds really happy. Now you may also want to think about lifting off the second finger and making that an A7 chord. Or you could readjust your fingers and add the pinky in on the high E third, kind of making an A7 that way. Or if you're digging on the bars, you could do it as a fifth fret bar, second finger on the G string six, third finger on the A string seven, and the pinky on the D string seven, kind of an A major chord that way. Or you could lift off the pinky and make it an A7. Or you could use that same shape that we were doing on the G for an A13 and do 1st finger on the low E 5th fret, 2nd finger on the D string 5th fret, 3rd finger on the G string 6th, and the pinky over the high in the D. And with that shape, I'm kind of muting out the A string, but it wouldn't really matter. It's an A chord, but that's called A13. And we kind of did it with two hits, and you may want to kind of do downs and kind of kill the strings, and then we do the G the same way, and then we kind of hit that lick at the end through our verse part. Now a lot of times with a song like this though, I like to use a strum pattern and you could do kind of kind of an eight down idea. You could even add muting into that if you wanted to make that kind of sneaky. You know, kind of work in the D, G, G, D, D, A, G, D lick, to kind of work through it that way. Or another one of my favorite
Hebrews from Hebrews for a 4-4 four, four like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So we took the D and just tried that a lot. You'd have down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, up. So we tried through that through that second chorus. We'd have the D down. part and our bridge starts out with this cool little sax lick where if you wanted to kind of follow that you could go fifth on the A, seven on the G, fifth on the G, seven on the D, fifth on the G, seven on the D, and then we could take third fret on the D string and kind of do a bend there, kind of three on the D string as a bend. So you got five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, three, bend. It's kind of that sax lick if you wanted to kind of follow it. If we were just going to kind of follow that, we'd have the D, 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 G, G, D, D, G, G, and then we end up with kind of a big A hit. Ba, da, 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 na, e, and then we'd be going back into our chorus part. Now something else I think about adding to the song that was bass notes, and a lot of times on that first down of the down, down, up, up, down, up, you could throw in a bass for the chord. So on the D, you have the D string for the bass, unless you're doing the D not, in which case you have the A string for the bass. Now on the G, you have the root for the bass. And if you're doing the root position A, you have the A string for your bass. Or if you're doing the A13 or the bar A, you have the for the bass. So we try that next chorus adding bass notes. We have D. parts. If we try our bridge with basses, then we have the D, da da da, D, da 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 da, and then G, G, D, D, G, G, and then we back to our A hit at the very end of that, da 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 da, and then we'd be going back into our chorus part. So you may want to take all these ideas actually and kind of mix them up actually any way you want to or if you know there are loops around these chords too. You know, feel, fr feel free to kind of take this lesson and run with it any way you want to. Or you can even kind of gravitate to those licks. part you're kind of coming out of that, that the A and the G hits of the last chorus and you got that D lick and then you do it again A hit G hit D lick A hit G hit and then that extended lick But 
that's the basics of how you can strum through I Feel Good by James Brown. So good luck! <laughs>